On the 24th of June 1945, the Soviet Union held the largest and longest parade ever held on Moscow's Red Square. 40,000 soldiers marched in military triumph with 1,850 vehicles. It was an overcast, rainy day, but a very important one for the citizens of the Soviet Union, watched over by their greatly feared but also greatly admired leader, Yosef Stalin. Just over a month had passed since the surrender of Nazi Germany, following the signing of the Instrument of Surrender late in the evening of the 8th of May 1945. The Soviet government had announced the victory to the war-weary and exhausted population early on the 9th of May. The Soviet Union had paid the highest price of all the Allied nations that fought Germany, losing 27 million soldiers and workers, vast stretches of its country and cities in ruins. Stalin had ordered that a great victory parade be held, giving the official order on the 22nd of June 1945 the fourth anniversary of Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union. During the parade, Stalin honoured, at least for the time being, the two marshals who had delivered to him Berlin, Georgi Zhukov and Konstantin Rokossovsky. They rode through Red Square on white and black stallions, respectively. Stalin and the Soviet leaders watched atop Lenin's mausoleum. In amongst the marching troops, blaring bands and rumbling vehicles was a part of the parade loaded with symbolism, the Flag Disposal Regiment. Two hundred hand-picked troops from the 1st Internal Troops Division, Felix Dijinsky of the dreaded NKVD marched with an extraordinary display of German and Nazi standards and regimental colours. Their significance was obvious to all who witnessed the parade. Here are the enemy's military honours, now under our control. Nazi Germany is no more. So what were these flags and banners? What did they represent? And where did the Soviets acquire them? Flags figured very strongly in the Moscow Victory Parade, which was led by a Soviet soldier carrying one of the red flags that was hoisted atop the Reichstag at the conclusion of the terrible Battle of Berlin. As for the German flags, well, they had an interesting backstory. The flags were not flags per se, but rather standards, or to use British military terminology, colours. Each represented a particular unit and were revered and venerated by the units themselves. In days gone by, the colours were carried into battle and served as a rallying point. But in the 20th century, these colourful flags were kept in regimental headquarters, far from battle and used in parades. In order to protect these standards from capture, Hitler had ordered hundreds sent for storage at various museums and bank vaults in Germany. Not all of the standards were from the Nazi era. Many were old Imperial German Army battle standards from World War I. With the complete defeat of Germany in May 1945, vast military collections of artefacts came under Allied control, and a lot of items were pilfered or destroyed. However, the NKVD and Schmiersch, the Soviet military intelligence mission investigating the fate of Hitler and other senior Nazis for Stalin, realized the propaganda value of the standards and gathered up 600 and sent them to Moscow. 
Ironically, most of the German standards were found by the Red Army inside the Zeughaus, the old army arsenal museum in central Berlin, near the Reich Chancellery, where, in 1943, a major exhibition of captured Red Army standards had been viewed by Hitler. They also recovered their own standards from the museum. Stalin himself ordered the inclusion of a flag disposal regiment in the Great Victory Parade. What better symbolism could there be than his household troops marching with the previous banners of the vanquished Germans? The standards were considered toxic, figuratively and perhaps literally, for the soldiers who carried the German standards wore gloves and apparently burned the gloves afterwards. A total of 201 German standards were chosen for the parade, out of the 600 or so taken to Moscow. Most were battalion standards from a variety of infantry, tank, cavalry, panzergrenadier and artillery units, plus some Luftwaffe. But the most infamous, and certainly one given a prominent place in the front row, was not a banner, but a pole topped with an eagle and swastika. This was the colour of the most senior SS unit, the 1st SS Panzer Division Leibstandarte SS Adolf Hitler, in the parade, it was missing its attached banner, which was later replaced. The standard was given such a prominent position as the staff carried the name Adolf Hitler atop it. The unit provided ceremonial guards at the Reich Chancellery in Berlin and at Hitler's Alpine Chalet, the Berghof in Bavaria, and grew into a panzer division that fought on the Eastern Front and famously in the Battle of the Bulge. During the victory parade, the flag disposal regiment marched up to the front of Lenin's rain-soaked tomb and tossed the German standards disdainfully down into a large pile. This scene was considered so important that it was reshot again a week later, this time in colour, ensuring that the Leibstandarte SS Adolf Hitler standard was shown prominently. For some years it was believed that the standards were burned thereafter, but today many, including the LSSAH standard, are on public display, the Moscow Military Museum, in a display that deliberately recreates that emotive scene in Red Square in June 1945. There was one flag that Stalin would dearly like to have possessed, but which was not present in Moscow that day. The Blutfahne, or blood flag, was a Nazi party holy relic, stained with the blood of SA stormtroopers who died during the 1923 Beer Hall Putsch in Munich. I've made a film about its likely fate in 1945, which is still a bit of a mystery, so please check out the end screen for a link. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. You can also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton, details below. And also help support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details again in the description box below. Mm -hmm.